What is up guys, Thaddeus here and in today's video we're going to be going over six things that you guys can use to help optimize your Facebook ads, your ad strategy, how you know narrowing your audiences, how you're you know increasing conversions and overall making more bang for your buck, alright? So we're going to hop right into that. It shouldn't be too long of a video guys but um, let's, 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 you know, I, I go on tangents so we'll see what happens, alright? So number one guys, actually I'm going to share my screen here just because I took notes for you guys. Alright guys, so tip number one that I want to actually show you guys is having some sort of funnel, okay? So basically what that means is like how are you actually making sure your ads are being used effectively, okay? So like like for, for a quick breakdown, right? So I wrote here the engagement funnel and VC, which is basically view content funnel. So these are two uh, kind of popular ones you can use to help build out and mature pixel data. Um, essentially what an engagement funnel is, basically you create an ad that's basically the objective is engagement, okay? Now with that ad, you just wanna wait for it to basically get, you know, I don't know, typically when you're starting off, you know, 2,000, 3,000 views, right? If it's a video, something like that. And then from there, what you wanna do is create a traffic or conversion ad, okay? But from that, you're actually gonna tweak it down, narrow it so that you're actually targeting the people who viewed you 25% or more of you know, that video or 50% or more of that video, right? So essentially what you're doing is, is you're narrowing it by people who are actually interested in you know, what you have to say, what your product is, what your offer is, right? So essentially what you're doing is you're making a video ad, all right, just to repeat this to get this in your head, right? You make a video ad based on engagement, okay? You kind of wait for that to actually get some engagement. And then from there, you, narrow, you create an, an additional ad that's basically going to be like targeting for conversions, basically targeting people who have viewed you know x amount of percent of content, right? If they viewed over twenty five percent of the video, over fifty percent of the video, whatever that is, so that Facebook can actually reach out and be like, okay, these people were actually interested because they actually watched your stuff um, rather than kind of like scrolling past it or just watching it for a few seconds, all right? So that's one thing. And now the next funnel, right? That you guys can again, there's lots of different funnels, guys. These are just examples you guys can kind of use to basically have you know, hey, I have one ad that does this, I have one ad that does this. It kind of captures the people from that ad, like blah, blah, blah. That's the kind of thing, right? That, that's basically a funnel, guys. It leads, you know, you have one thing that basically attracts new people. You have this other ad that basically attracts the people that were interested in that, like from there. So like, there's a lot of stuff you guys can do. The next one, guys, is the view content ad, or the view content funnel, right? All right, so basically the view content funnel is essentially, you're creating an ad that is essentially supposed to be driving traffic, okay? Now what does that mean? So you want basically Facebook to kind of find the people interested in like clicking through to your website or just visiting your website, just basically viewing content, right? That's what it is. You want people to actually view this stuff on your website, okay? So basically guys, from that, you're gonna create an additional ad campaign that's gonna basically take the people who visited your website from the first view content ad, and you're also gonna create a lookalike audience from the people who visit the website, okay, from there to target for, again, conversions and whatnot, okay? So again, guys, these are different funnels that you guys can use to kind of optimize um, basically who you're sending to your actual website. So it's again, it's funneling people in. So the first ad or whatever it is, even for engagement, view content, whatever it is, it has a broader reach, right? It's getting more people, okay? But then from there, your second follow-up ad is taking, you know, the, that smaller chunk of people that were actually interested in your business, your service, your products, right? And then from there, it's gonna target those people to kind of get them to convert, okay? So ho hopefully that, can, that kind of makes sense, all right? now. Tip number two for optimizing Facebook ads is ad frequency, right? What a lot of people don't really understand is that most people aren't gonna buy your product, you know, the first time they see it, like right away, okay? So usually you need, you know, a couple impressions so they see it, you know, multiple times throughout the day or whatever it is, okay? So basically, it's a very fine line between having way too many impressions where, you know, they see it so often that basically they lose interest and now you're just wasting money kind of throwing it in their face constantly versus they only see it once and then they never think of it again, okay? So again, just by tweaking that kind of stuff, guys, you can actually set caps on Facebook, like limits essentially to like how often or how little you want them to see your actual ad or your impressions basically, um, just so that, you know, hey, you don't really, because again, you have to experiment, because I, I, I can't tell you the exact number. I don't know your niche, I don't know your product, I don't know your service, but essentially what you're doing is you're telling Facebook, okay, I want you to actually, you know, only show it to uh, people maybe twice, okay, a day, or whatever it is, right? Just so that Facebook can kind of on analyze. And again, you'll notice when you set these caps, that your price change, right? If you're doing link clicks, if you're, you know, whatever your objective is, having these different kind of barriers and stuff, you'll notice changes in, you know, how much it costs you. Because again, if you're showing people, you know, eight times before you expect them to buy, that could have a huge price difference versus showing them, you know, twice. 
okay? And eight times might be way too much, so where they see it so often that they just don't really care anymore, now you're wasting money, okay? But one time might be too little, where they're only seeing it, you know, again, one time, and then they don't think about it ever again, okay? So again, guys, you want that, you know, that ad recall, um, basically where they, they, you know, they've seen it, they kind of are familiar with what it is, and then you can retarget them and, you know, create more funnels off of that, okay? Now, tip number three, guys, is scaling. Um, basically, how you kind of want to scale with Facebook ads is, you know, say you're testing with a bunch of these different ad sets, these different funnels, right? You want to find, like, the winning one if you're testing, you know, multiple and kind of the same objective or category, okay? And basically, once you find the winning one, you can basically pause the other ones that you were testing with, okay? And then from there, again, guys, I wouldn't really change that winning one, right? Because it's working for you, okay? So don't change it. I would duplicate it and then increase that one's budget by, you know, 20%, okay? And then increase it by 20% every two or three days until you start to see an actual decline in basically the result it's generating you, right? Okay, that, that's one way of scaling, okay? There's another method as well where you guys can basically, you see a winning ad set and then you basically dump a lot of money into it very quickly instead of over time. Um, basically what that's more used for is like trendy stuff. So again, a lot of you guys are drop shipping or e-commerce. If you're on a trend and you wanna scale very fast, you find you know, the winning ad and then you pump a lot of money into it really quickly and then you basically capitalize you know, on that trend, on the hype around it, um, basically just getting you know, everyone's attention with that ad, okay? Now, tip number four, narrowing your audience. So using audience insights with Facebook, that's something that a lot of people just don't really know or they don't really go, they don't utilize to you know, their best advantage. Because essentially what that is, guys, it's, it's allowing you to look at your potential audiences, who's interested in what your product, service, whatever it is, before you actually start spending money you know, targeting people that you may or may not um, get results with, right? Because again, with Facebook, some people, you know, they just, can't find or they can't target the right people guys and so using you know audience insights and then finding out that information um, all these demographics whatever it is all these interests buying behaviors whatever it, they are basically guys utilizing that to the best of your ability instead of just you know throwing money into the wind with facebook ads and not really you know taking into account you know hey this might not be you know my actual market um just utilizing that guys is something that i would advise because I think it's overlooked many, many, many a time. Um, and the next one, guys, is basically with scaling and you know with audience sizes and whatnot. I've seen a lot of people they think having you know a huge audience right off the bat is a good thing because they think you know they're encompassing everyone. Thus, you know someone inside is gonna find it and like it. And although you know it's not like a bad mentality to have, it's not necessarily the best. Okay, with my mentality and with how I kind of work with Facebook ads, guys, it's. I wanna find that one person who's gonna go crazy over my product, okay? I wanna find that one person. So basically, my audience sizes are very, very small, guys. I've seen people, you know, they have three to five to seven million in their audiences, like, for their population, and that's, that's way too big, guys, okay? Don't get me wrong, you can get results with that. I'm sure some of you guys will or have, but I'm saying with my methods, what works for me, because again, there isn't just one way that works for everyone. You need to test and experiment. Um, but just what works for me is I want to find, you know, that one person who's going to go crazy over my product, my brand, my story, whatever it is, and then tell Facebook, okay, I know who this guy is now. Go find 10 more. Go find 100 more. Go find 1,000 more. And then from there, it's kind of scaling up instead of starting really, really big and then kind of just throwing money and money and money at it and just kind of seeing what sticks, right? So there's different ways to go about it, guys. That's just my two cents on just audiences and how I don't necessarily think, you know, the bigger the audience is. Um, necessarily like you know the bigger kind of return or conversions that you guys will get okay now tip number five guys is placement basically my my personal preferences are with Facebook ad paid ads and whatnot um, for mobile ads I stick to Instagram sponsored posts Instagram story posts okay I don't really do Facebook mobile news feed basically on how I've kind of studied things and how kind of I've gotten results with you know what I do uh, what I find that works best is basically like my people whoever I'm targeting they're if, if they're on their phone guys they're more likely um, than not on Instagram instead of Facebook I'm um, just scrolling through right um, again Facebook is usage time is dying that's also a thing to take into account but Instagram is still very 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 prominent in everyone's lives so just if I'm targeting mobile people I usually stick to Instagram instead of Facebook mobile so I usually take that out um, and just you know have stories um, feed posts whatever they are sponsored posts and then if I'm doing desktop right then it's just Facebook and whatnot I don't really mess with too much on the display networks just you know when you're choosing your placement guys it's how like where do you want to be seen right for Facebook mobile like again I go to Instagram because that is Instagram is purely a mobile app 
okay? So it's, you know, geared for, you know, people on their phones and whatnot, okay? And so it's kind of just, you know, pick and play, essentially, which is what you want to do, but guys, that's just my two cents on it. And then, guys, the last one, tip number six, um, reuse your old ads to, you know, keep engagement, okay? What I mean by that is, in this online world, we live, you know, everyone's, you know, that you need social proof, you need FOMO, or you gotta like bring in FOMO and like instill FOMO into, you know, people's heads, all that kind of stuff. That's why people have these apps like Sales Pop and all that kind of stuff on their website so that they can show people and build trust and build social proof for their brand, okay? Now, what you need to do is take that into account with your paid ads, okay? Because if people are seeing ads that, you're, that they're running on their newsfeed but they have zero likes or, you know, two likes, three likes, it's, it's gonna be a lot less engaging than you know them scrolling through and seeing an ad that has 5,000 likes and then going, oh wow, that's a lot of likes. People actually, you know, people actually like this product, right? So that's something to take into account, guys. And basically what you're doing is you're just reusing you know, old ads or old copy, okay? And so that, that way you can kind of take that on and continue it instead of starting everything from scratch again and having to restart that engagement. Um, and then guys, just having that, it's just a social proof benefit basically. Because it, it doesn't cost you any extra, doesn't do anything like that, and it just helps you in the long run. Because people are seeing that ad and they're seeing it already has a bunch of engagement before they've seen it for their first time, uh, which just helps you and helps your brand. Okay guys, so those are the tips, the six tips for optimizing you know, Facebook ad strategies and just how to go about things um, maybe a little bit more efficiently or effectively guys. Uh, just to get you know more bang for your buck. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave a like and comment. I respond to everybody's comments and don't forget to subscribe, guys. Be sure to check out the platform down below. I'm more than excited about it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care and peace. Thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment. Check out the Ecom Hub, my personal platform, which covers literally everything e commerce related from the mastery course, the free PDFs, and mini courses. And last but not least, don't forget to check out my social media and follow me for updates, giveaways, and literally everything that's cool. Don't give me too easy, I like a little challenge. When it feels better, will you take a little damage? Slow, learning fast.